Hi everyone, this is Mu Chen. Today I'm going to talk about Raft, recurrent OPS feed transforms for optic flow. This paper is nominated as the best paper of ECC V2020. Despite the paper looks kind of technical, I will try my best to give you a general intuitive understanding of how it works. So here's the topics that I will cover today. And let's start with some background knowledge. So what is optic flow? In the definition, optic flow is the notion of scenes caused by the relative movement between the object and the camera. In this picture, we have two consecutive, consecutive frames in time, and we aim to find the optic, optic flow from frame 1 to frame 2. Then for a given pixel A with coordinate x, y, we aim to find the corresponding pixel A prime in frame 2 by predicting a 2D displacement vector, dx and dy. So put it in a simple way, we can understand optic flow as the task of predicting a set of pixel displacements between two consecutive images. But why optic flow? In some sense, optic flow tracks the movement of pixels and is therefore a straightforward way to relate two frames in consecutive time sequence. By tracing pixel sets on the interesting key points of the object, optic flow can give you an natural clue of object trajectories and can therefore be used to track it. Also, since the dense optic flow can naturally separate human motion from relative scene, it is also used in action classification, especially before deep, uh, deep learning based technology for video understanding is widely used. What's more, many video restoration tasks rely highly on the optic flow to wrap the neighbor frames to the central ones. Uh, to get more information to restore the central frame. We also see some recent works uh, which relates optic flow, depth estimation, and video integration as a joint task. So, depending on the target thickness, we can predict a sparse version of optical flow by selecting a few pixels depicting the edges or corners of an object, or we can predict a dense optic flow by predicting the per pixel flow vectors of the entire frame. Uh, apparently, uh, dense optic, optic flow are more computationally expensive because we predict down the more pixels, but definitely have more fine grade features for the downstream task. Here, Raft focused mainly on the dense optic flow, so this will be our topic today. So let's review on some related words. Before deep learning ages, the optic flow is treated as an energy minimization problem, which is kind of off topic, and I will not cover it here. Uh, but uh, with the representation power of deep neural networks and the emergence of uh, synthetic datasets, uh, we can treat this as a supervised task. And if you think about it, if you recall the paired classification problem in assignment one, uh, the most straightforward idea of this is to directly predict a flow using an encoder decoder neural network and uh, based on the paired input image and we have uh, our synthetic data set in support of this uh, but the, the direct outputs of the decoder can be sometimes of low qualities and so usually a multiple encoder and a decoder will be stacked to have a kind of cause to find refinements of the optic flow so observing this some people say that well well, let's uh, directly treat this problem as a iterative refinement. So they use the subnetwork to iteratively refine and update the residual of the flow. Uh, like in these pictures, uh, you have uh, uh, the output would be the residual between the uh, uh, ground truth flows and the, the current flow, and uh, you concatenate the your current flow to the input and uh, iteratively update the flow. But this kind of method is limited by the some network size. Uh, pretty, uh, typical work on this would be the iterative residual refinement network, uh, which iterates five times using a small version of a flow net. Uh, but uh, Raft is also an iterative uh, algorithm, but it uses kind of a small and neat module and uh, it can iterate over 100 times on the same amount of computation. 
another thing I'd like to mention here is learning to optimize. Uh, that is, network can be used to predict the input parameters of uh, optimization problem and therefore can be trained end to end as long as the optimization process is differentiable. And this is kind of combination between a uh, traditional optimization algorithm and a deep learning based algorithm. And Raft can also be viewed as learning to optimize because uh, it ha has this kind of iterative optimal module and uh, it resembles the steps of a uh, first order, order optimization algorithm. So let's dive in the method of Raft. We have the overview of the network pipeline here. Uh, we want to predict uh, um, octave flow from frame one to frame two, and Raft can be distilled down to these three stages. First is feature extraction, where features are extracted from the input images using a convolutional network encoders. And the next, we have this correlation matrix computing, uh, where visual similarities between all pairs of pixels are computed by constructing a full correlation volume. And after that, we have this iterative update operator, where it has, estimates a sequence of flow f1 to fn by lookup in this visual similarity matrix, and uh, it outputs a data f each time to refine the current es estimate of the flow. So all stages here are differentiable and is compo can be composed into an end-to-end -end trainable architecture. So for the feature encoder, uh, here it's just uh, stacks of uh, residual blocks. And note that we use separate encoder for context encoding here and a visual similarity computing here. And now after feature extraction, we have our correlation parameter. It basically is stacks of for the correlation volume at each scale. So what is this correlation matrix? Let's dive into this part. Correlation matrix stores visual similarities between every pixel i in image one and every pixel j in image two. These similarities are computed using dot product between visual vectors. So here, i1 and i2 are our input frame 1 and frame 2, and g theta is the feature encoder. For a feature vector in, in g theta i1, we take the inner product with all frame feature vectors in g theta i2. Thus, we generate a 4D WH by WH volume. Uh, here, we take the 2D slices of a full 4D volume. Uh, each pixel in the image 1 can produ produce a 2D response map of the image 2. And uh, after this, we apply 2 by 2 average pooling three times to get uh, a full correlation matrix at uh, different scales. So these four correlation matrix are the correlation parameter we want. After the correlation matrix is computed, it is fixed during the rest of it, the iterative algorithm. We then have this uh, correlation lookup operator, operator, which performs lookup at each time on the correlation volume based on the current estimates of flow. Given the current estimates of the flow F1 and F2 and the pixel S with coordinate UV in the image one, we draw the pixel here in the in this grid, and this grid is the uh, correlation response for the uh, uh, pixel on image two. So since we have the estimates of of the flow, we can express the correspondence pixel in image two x prime as the uh, uh, UV as the flow vectors. So the x prime is here. So after we have x prime, we define a local grid around x prime. Uh, that would be x prime plus dx, and dx here is a paired integer and uh, the one normal of dx should be less than or equal to r. This means uh, dx, uh, the, the local grid should be a one normal, and if we uh, draw it out with r equal to one, it should look like this. So the local grid is basically the this orange area around this uh, x prime, and uh, sometimes uh, and uh, and x prime can be a fractional number. So uh, uh, this. This black dot in the local grid can also be fraction number, so we need to use uh, bilinear sampling. Uh, uh, for for instance, here we, uh, we we should interpolate this black on here using the neighboring four red points. So recall we have correlation matrix shape, which is H W times H W, 
So what we do is for all the pixel x uv in image one and uh, x prime ij in the local grid of x prime, we gather all DC uv ij. So let's say this is our pixel uv. Uh, we find we find the correlation response of this pixel on image two and then gather up the local grid around the x prime based on the estimate flow. And we do this operation for all the pixels on the image one. And at the end, we concat concatenate all these things together. And uh, this is the result of a correlation lookup. And it's also something we later send into the iterative recurrent unit. Now we have the 4D correlation volumes. We can talk about the iterative update. Uh, the iterative update is relative simple to understand. Uh, what we have now have here is an initial initial estimate flow, which is initialized as zero here. And we want to iteratively refine the flow f by correlation lookup and the update operator, which is uh, the block here, based on the previous estimated flow. So uh, basically, the update block here is based on uh, gated activation units, and uh, you can understand this whole process. Whole, whole network as uh, a kind of recurrent neural network. And what it do, it, it's basically it takes uh, correlation lookup results as input, and it also has these uh, hidden features here, and it also takes takes the uh, context features as an input. It outputs the hidden features for next stage, and it also outputs an uh, delta f for the current flow f, and if you add this data f with f, we have the flow for the next step. So uh, this correlation lookup and update operator. So as for the root loss function, graph used the uh, L1 distance between the uh, predicted and ground truth flow over the full sequence of prediction f1 to f1. So the gamma here is an exponentially increased weight it means the loss should care, should care more about the output at uh, the longer iterations. So gamma here is 0 0.8 and the n here is 32. So by now you should have a relative clear idea of what Red is doing. But if you don't, don't worry, I will give you an intuitive overview. So basically in my understanding, what the algorithm do is that it is an iterative Look up and update process on the similarity matrix. So intuitively, what we want to do here is to uh, take a look at the current estimates of our flow and take a look at our local grid on the similarity matrix, and and this will give give us hints on what direction we should go uh, to make the flow more accurate. Uh, if you think about it, the uh, corresponding pixel should should have a high similarity score. So uh, in, in this in this in this pixel here, uh, it, it should look at the local grid and discover that like the, the pixel here have a higher score with the uh, original original pixel. So it should be confident to take a huge leap along this direction. Another thing I probably left over is the efficient computation of the correlation matrix. So the ori original computational correlation matrix would be uh, quite computationally expensive before because we are operating on a relative high resolution. So a basic idea, a simple idea is to only compute the correlation matrix we need each time doing when we do the correlation lookup. So this will give us a complexity of OKHW, where K is the number of iterations. And in the rough implementation, they do this efficiently by implementing a CUDA version of the correlation lookup. So let's look at some experiments and evaluation. First, some tips on how to visualize this flow. Uh, since flow are vectors, we can map the direction to color and map the magnitude to saturation. Uh, for example, this, this map here is moving upwards and this bird here is moving downwards. and uh, this makes sense given their process. For the training and the evaluation datasets, 
uh, the ref to use flying chairs and finds these as its returning dataset, which is a synthetic dataset with more than uh, 60,000 uh, training frames for pertaining the network. And uh, the evaluation is done on Sintel and KT15 test dataset. Sintel is uh, also a synthetic dataset based on 3D animation, uh, and KT15 is a real dataset. So here's the some quantitative evaluation. Uh, I should mention here the evaluation metric here is APE and point arrow, and it's basically the Euclid Euclidean distance of ground truth flow and the predict predictive flow. So what you need to focus here is these red boxes and these red boxes. Uh, for all methods in this row, they are trained on the fine chains and fine things, and uh, they are tested down to different data sets of Sintel and KD15. And you can really see that uh, Raft here has a strong generalization ability, and it's able to perform our other methods uh, with a huge gap. For this red box here, the method here are so trained with uh, uh, more, more data, uh, with Sintel and KT data, and then and, and here's an, an additional, additional data set. You can still see that uh, Sintel has a, a, a huge performance leap compared to other data sets. So here's some qualitative evaluation. Uh, you can see Raft is here and it is really able to produce high quality results, especially on these edges. You can see how clear this edges is, and it can even correctly predict the, the movement of these small birds here, where other methods just uh, miss all the information on this background. Again, some qualitative evaluation, and this is a result on an unseen data set during the training and fine-tuning. It's from Davis data set. You can Again, see how well Raft is generalized can, can be generalized across the different datasets. So here we have our inference time and the parameter account, as showed in these three figures. Uh, as you can see in these figures, uh, Raft is more efficient in terms of uh, parameters count, inference time, and uh, training iterations. That is convergence speed. Uh, I should mention here that the uh, evaluation is done on the uh, 10 iterations output. So if we iterate more times, we'll get better results, but we will be slow. And lastly, here's some conclusions. I think the main reason that this paper can be the best paper is twofolded. One is that Octaflow is really very important and basic question in the configuration and really boost the performance of optical flow to another stage. So this could be really beneficial to many relative errors. And ref also have shows a strong generalization ability, which probably benefits from the learning to optimize pipeline. And this can also shed light on many similar tasks. For some future works, I think works can be done on combining ref to different tasks like uh, video restoration and video tracking or one can simply follow the work of Raft and research on how to design the pipeline of iterative updates and to let flow estimation converge faster. So that's all, and thank you for listening. Any questions?